Listen, I know a title like this one probably has you thinking I'm some kind of crazy person. I, I can't really blame you. Hell, I kind of agree with you. We were in way over our heads. I learned a lot from my experience living off the grid though. Life, relationships, and human nature are radically different things to me now. To start, my name is Eddie. I was a 19 year old college dropout that had no future in modern society. I'd hated the notion of working for the man from the time I was in high school. For three years, I'd spent every day after school flipping burgers so an overweight degenerate can enjoy his chemical induced early death sentence. I made just enough money to pay for my piece of shit car to bring me back the next day. School was terrible too. It was never about learning or thinking for yourself. It was all about regurgitating what your overqualified babysitters tell you so you can get good grades to get a good job and hopefully, if you're lucky, your corporate owner is nice enough to pay you a decent wage for your labor, all the while he's getting rich from someone else's. <laughs> As you can tell, I didn't exactly fit in with the uh, system. I hated everything about it and at the time, I saw only one remedy for the situation, living off the grid. I had a number of friends who liked the idea but didn't want to leave college to live a more natural life. I was only able to convince two of my friends to accompany me, Zach and Jackie. Zach was a weird cross between a hippie, a conspiracy theorist, and an anarchist. He didn't want to run away as he put it, he wanted to burn the entire system to the ground. Thankfully, he was smart enough to see how impossible that would be. Jackie was really into veganism and paganism and stuff like that. She called herself a witch, but her altar often featured other religious figures like Jesus and Buddha. I guess she can best be described as a spiritual naturalist. We made plans to move into a small cabin we built out in the middle of nowhere. It was a giant pain in the ass to build this thing so far out there. We had to walk for over an hour from where we parked our cars, but after a few labor-induced weekends and a lot of help from our other friends, we had ourselves a nice little home away from hell in the Appalachian forest. I couldn't have been more excited. Zach and Jackie were some of my best friends and I knew that it was going to be a blast to live there. Just to be safe though, we all agreed that if one of us wanted to return to civilization, we'd help them back and then reevaluate the situation. Having only three people was bad enough, but just two could result in a disaster. As one more precautionary step, we brought one of those radios with the crazy battery lives. If there was ever some kind of emergency, we always had that to contact the wildlife services to get help. Our parents and friends all expected us to return within a few weeks, but we were determined to stay much longer than that. Nothing was going to stop us. I loaded the last box of books into the back of Zach's truck and stuffed myself into the passenger seat. Dude, are you ready to finally take off the government's leash or what? I sure as hell am. I looked over to Jackie and asked if she was too. She only gave me a subtle nod before returning her eyes to her paganism book. The drive went by all too quickly. I was happy to finally have the chance to do this, but I was honestly really nervous. My dad spent the entire night before warning me about certain things. He actually wrote out a list of things to do in various scenarios. It was, it was really nice of him. But even with all the safety measures we took, I still felt nervous about this whole thing. As I stared out the window and watched the buildings pass us by, I couldn't help but feel an ominous feeling eating away at my excitement. It told me of temptation, suffering, and death were in my future. I did my best to remove those thoughts from my head and focus on the last time I'd be hearing music from the radio for a very long time. After a long day of settling in and getting everything set up, we made a fire before bed. So, how long do you boys think we're gonna last out here? I'm shooting for a month. At least then we can prove our parents wrong. You guys are weak. I'm staying out here forever. I'm never going back to being a dead slave. 
There ain't no Federal Reserve out here. Here we go with the conspiracy theories. You guys gotta look into it. I bought a book. It's, uh, somewhere here. Creature from Jekyll Island. Read it, man. You'll see how crazy and evil that shit really is. Zach, is there a conspiracy theory you don't believe in? Hey, I only believe in the real ones. Okay, name them. Let's hear them all, right here. Alright, the Federal Reserve is a ploy to turn us into debt slaves. JFK was assassinated for trying to stop the Fed. The Bermuda Triangle is a CIA time-traveling operation. The Holocaust is a hoax. The Earth is flat. George Soros controls the entire U.S. Congress. Bush did 9-11. Global warming is a lie. Obama's a Muslim and evolution is state propaganda. We should have brought more tinfoil. (laughs) (laughs) Zach and I decided to explore around the area and map out any useful locations. We invited Jackie to join us, but she wanted to do some spiritual ritual. Man, we've got a steady supply of fruit, drinking water, everything we'd ever need, but not a place to go swimming. Ah, so you like swimming now. Well, not back home, but now that we're in the wild, it would be pretty fun. They even had a place to swim in Lost. Lost? Don't tell me you've never heard of Lost. Uh... Okay. We're going back to civilization for a few days so you can watch it. (laughs) (laughs) So, I had to ask you, those conspiracies you were talking about last night were pretty crazy. I'm not too familiar with most of them, but you did mention the, uh, the flat earth. You don't actually think the earth is flat, do you? Of course I do. NASA has faked every single picture and video of the earth. Ever. Not to mention that nobody has ever seen the curvature. Plus, did you know that NASA means to deceive and- Wait, dude, do you see that? See what? That. Holy shit, we found a waterfall. That's fucking awesome, man. Let's go check it out. Looks like we found ourselves a swimming spot. Let's go jump in. Do you see how tall that thing is? We'll die. No balls. (sighs) Alright. Let's do it. Hey, Eddie. Where are you? Hey, dude. You okay? (laughs) Gotcha. Don't do that, man. You had me worried. Hey, it's getting kind of late. We should start heading back. Yeah, you're right. This was nice, though. Nothing like a cool swim on a hot trek through the woods. Wait. Stop. Did you see that? Wait, did you find another waterfall? No, I think I saw someone. Right over there. Dude, it it was probably just a squirrel. I don't think so, man. It was definitely person-shaped. Don't worry about it, man. If anything, it was just some random hiker or some shit. Let's get back home already. I don't want Jackie to be dancing naked without us. Yeah. Yeah, alright. Let's go. By this point, we'd gotten settled in quite nicely. Jackie was in charge of the garden. Zack and I spent most of our time hunting for squirrels or bringing back water. We honestly didn't need to either. We had enough food and supplies that we could probably last five or six months before running out. Life was, uh, was really happy. There was a certain serenity that we could all feel. The simplicity was liberating. I wondered to myself how long this feeling would last. It felt like I'd died and gone to heaven. I know that probably sounds weird to anyone listening to this, but I really mean it. If you ever start living the simple life, you'll see what I mean. We only had to work a few hours a day on various tasks and the rest of our free time was basically left to do whatever the hell we wanted. I spent most of my time reading. I'm currently reading 1984. Ah, what a story. I imagine that's how most people back home are living right about now, at least compared to us. Jackie is obsessed with her garden and herbs, even brought some cannabis seeds. She, uh, she smokes weed when she meditates, says it helps her achieve a higher level of focus somehow. I honestly, 
I kind of envy her spirituality thing. Zack spends his free time exercising. I thought I was a fitness enthusiast, but he takes it to the next level. If he's not sleeping or eating, he's running or doing pull-ups. There's this one tree not too far from our cabin that's just perfect for pull-ups. We spend our nights relaxing by the fire and talking. Well, Zack does most of the talking. There's always another conspiracy theory he needs to tell us about. If it's not the master plan to discredit Hitler and destroy Germany, it's the real reason for the Civil War and how the northern states constantly screwed over the southern states and blah blah blah. The funny thing about it is that he actually knows a lot about these events and sometimes I wonder if he's onto something. I started telling myself that if we ever went back to civilization, I'd actually look into some of the conspiracy theories he talked about. But with the way life was going out here, it looks like that day would never come. Eddie. Hey Ed. Ed, wake up. <clears throat> What's up? Zach's gone. He wasn't in his bed before I woke up. And he wasn't outside either. Jackie, J Jackie, listen. C just, just calm down. I'm sure he's fine. We need to use the emergency radio now. Like, right now. Jackie, let me look around, okay? If I can't find him, we'll use the radio. Ugh, fine. Hey, Zach! Zach! Hmm, um... Uh, let's go check the waterfall. He, he loves that place. Do you think he's okay? Jackie, look... Zack is one of the toughest people I know. I'm sure he's fine. And if he's not over by the waterfall, we'll use the radio just to be on the safe side. Don't worry. Everything's gonna be okay. Thanks, Eddie. No problem. Okay, uh, the waterfall is just over here. I don't see him, Eddie. Um, what, wait. I, th I think that's him, right over there. What's he doing in that tree? Uh, let's go find out. Hey, Zach, what are you doing up there? Waiting for them. Who's them? Hold on. Guys, I think there are other people out here with us. Zach, people hike through these woods all the time. Eddie, give him a chance. Okay, I thought I heard something this morning. It woke me up. I decided to go investigate. I didn't want to bother you guys, so I didn't wake you up. I thought it would just be a few minutes, but it wasn't. When I got outside, there was a man standing there. He was in the shadow, so I couldn't make out any distinct features. When I asked him who he was, he ran. I chased him all the way down here, but he got away from me. I know he's around here somewhere. I've been waiting for him to come back out. Hey, Eddie. Is he coming back yet? No, he says he's staying out there until he finds that guy. Well, come sit with me by the fire. I'm... I'm scared. Eddie, do you think we belong out here? I don't know, Jackie. I don't know. Things were still going good by this time, but, but Zack, he was really getting obsessed with that guy. We just couldn't get him to see reason. He was convinced that this guy was out to get us. Zack doesn't know why, but I guess he doesn't need a why. I wish he'd just let go of this thing. He's gonna waste his time worrying about some stranger trying to kill us and isn't gonna enjoy the beautiful simplicity that's right in front of him. Me and Jackie were at least enjoying ourselves. She's been doing her thing and I've been reading. I finished 1984. It was really sad. I guess Big Brother's gonna get us all, eventually. I wonder what I'm gonna read next. Eddie, Jackie, I think you guys should start practicing with the knives. Just in case something happens. Zach, you're getting too obsessed with this thing. You saw one guy one time, and he ran away. Nobody out here is a threat to our safety. You're wrong. There are more out here. I know it. I'll do my best to protect you guys, but we're not all together all the time. 
If something happens to you guys, I never forgive myself. Just a few hours here and there, okay? Okay, man. Just chill it with the conspiracy stuff. Talking about the flat earth is one thing, but I don't think anybody is out here to get us. We'll both learn whatever you want, but you need to promise us that you'll calm down with this stuff. You're driving yourself crazy, man. Yeah, sure thing. Zack started teaching us how to use the knives. He showed us how to throw them properly and stuff like that. I could tell that Jackie wasn't really interested in learning, but she did it just to ease Zack's nerves. Other than that, things were still great. We continued on with what made us happy. Jackie still did her spirituality thing, and Zack went a little crazy working out and hunting. He wasn't talking about that guy anymore, so we were hoping he'd finally let it go and saw that he overreacted a little bit. I like Zack. He's one of my best friends. But even then, I, I was a little worried about him. I finally found my next book I'm gonna read, Lord of the Flies. I vaguely remember it from 9th grade English class, but that was a long time ago that I don't really remember too much. Not to mention it was one of those classes where the teacher called on students to read out loud. What a stupid idea that was. It was always the borderline illiterate degenerates who volunteered, ensuring there was enough uhs and ums that everyone in the class lost the few brain cells they still had left. I am so glad I'm not there anymore. Hey Eddie, Jackie, I need to talk to you. What's up, Zach? Remember how I got crazy after I saw that one guy outside our camp? Yeah. I just saw more of them. At least a dozen. Are you sure? Yes. They all ran like deer when they heard me. What did they look like? I don't know. Like I said, they ran. All split up in different directions. They all wore dark clothing. So, what do you think we should do about it? I mean, it's not like- We need to go after them. You two didn't listen to me when I told you, and now there are more of them. Grab your knives and let's go. Zach, don't you think you're overreacting again? Maybe they were just campers or something. Stop it. I know what I saw. The way they were standing there. I know they were up to no good. I know they were planning to do something to us. They were holding guns. They were huge. They're coming for us. Listen, Zach, I think we- Shut the fuck up. We need to go after them right now before they get too far. Zach, it's already really late. If we go march around the woods now, we're going to be out here in the dark. Don't you think it'd be safer just to stay here for now and figure this out together? Are you guys coming with me or not? Fine. I'm going alone. Wait, man. No. If you want to let these people plot against us, fine. But I'm not going to just sit on my hands and do nothing. And with that, Zack stormed off into the woods with his knives, determined to find the others, whoever the hell that was. It was a few days before we saw Zack again. Jackie and I got really worried about him. Zack still wasn't back yet. Jackie wanted to use the radio to get help, but I kept telling her that Zack was going to snap out of it come back to camp and everything was gonna be okay. In retrospect, I should have listened to her. She would have used the radio and called for help if I had not talked her out of it. Nonetheless, I was really stressed out during this time, and I was worried about Zack. Why did he have to go crazy like this? The more Jackie and I talked about it, the more we thought that Zack didn't actually see any of these so-called others. Maybe there was something wrong with him. It's hard to say anything for sure. Jackie and I were freaking out. It was dark, we were in the middle of nowhere, and there had been no sign of Zack for days. The forest became creepier and creepier by the day. There was something about not having Zack with us that made it seem as if we were vulnerable. We'd been spending most of our days going around the areas near our camp searching for him, but he seemed to have disappeared as if taken by the others. After Jackie pushed for it more and more, I finally agreed that if Zack wasn't back by sunrise, we'd radio for help. Eddie, I'm really scared right now. 
Me too, Jackie. Me too. I don't know what the odds of this happening were, but Zack actually showed up before we radioed for help. Hey guys. Hey guys? That's all you have to say for yourself? Listen, calm down. Everything is okay now. I made it back safely, and we're all okay. That's not the point. We've been waiting around, in the middle of the forest, for you to come back. What the hell were you thinking? Jackie, calm down. Now, Zach, what have you been doing this entire time? Okay, at first, I was just wandering around. I was alone, and I wasn't entirely sure which direction I should have been going. After two or three days, I found one of them. I tracked them to their base. I have it on this map. I killed a few of them when they were by themselves. Never saw it coming. Wait, you killed people? I had to. They were going to hurt us if I didn't. Well, when I did, I buried the bodies and got the hell out of there. I bet they realized their own people missing by now. This is war. Stop with that shit. We're not at war with anyone. We need to call for help right now. You can't be killing people, Zack. We didn't come out here for this. Shut the hell up. We're not calling anyone for help. It's too late, Zack. I'm calling right now. Hey! We're not going anywhere. Things have gotten really bad. Zack has officially lost his mind. He won't let me or Jackie go home. He broke the radio. I have no idea what to do. How did he get like this? I've known him for most of my life, and I've never seen him act out this way. He won't even let me and Jackie be alone without him. He thinks that we'd conspire against him. He's not wrong. I'm trying to avoid the fight between him and I, where one of us ends up stabbed and bleeding to death in the middle of the woods. The craziest thing he's done is burn all my books. I didn't get a chance to finish reading Lord of the Flies. I don't know how it ends. I don't see a way this situation has a happy ending. What the- Jackie, let's get out of here. This way. Get back here. The pursuit continued for what felt like hours. Zack didn't have a hard time keeping up with us. Eddie, right here. I don't know how we managed it, but we were able to hide in a tree trunk. Zack ran by and didn't see us. We waited about 10 minutes before running back to civilization. Jackie and I spent the rest of the night quietly traveling through those woods. The darkness made it a difficult journey, but we knew we had to get as much space between us and Zack as possible. We only had one instance where we thought we were lost, and it didn't last very long. We made it to the street, found the nearest house, and the owners were nice enough to help us get back to our real homes. After everything was said and done, we didn't know what to think. It was only a few days later that I was interviewed by a detective. I told him about Zack and his paranoia. I told him about the conspiracies and all the crazy ideas Zack clinged to. I told him about the others and how Zack thought these people were going to try and come and kill us or whatever he thought. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. Your friend was right. The others he feared are a documented criminal organization we've been tracking for years. They are one of the most heinous and savage groups we've ever come across. Infamous for stalking, torturing and killing hikers. But that hardly matters. He knew the truth and look what it did to him. It's much easier to look the other way. Pretend the inconsistencies do add up. To pretend that everything's going to be okay. Woe to him who bears the burden of truth.